was 1999. Wendy's station was employed by the local municipal government, guided young women on camping trips, taught courses, hosted foreign exchange students, and was the cool mom whose home was filled with her three kids as well as neighborhood kiddos. But then, Wendy was hospitalized and diagnosed with herpes simplex encephalitis. Neither Wendy nor her family had any idea what the future held. Life had changed forever. My name is Wendy Station. I'm from North Vancouver, BC. In April of 1999, I was rushed to hospital and diagnosed as having encephalitis, herpes simplex encephalitis. I spent four weeks in hospital, after which I went home and actually had to be babysat by my parents because I couldn't cope with anything. Um, since that time, my family and myself have searched everywhere for resources to learn more about encephalitis, and we came up empty-handed. Encephalitis had left its mark on Wendy's body. A successful day consisted of not pulling the IV out of her arm, having the energy to take walks, earning the right to be unsupervised, accepting what she was no longer able to do, and learning how to emote again after experiencing a long, dry spell of just existing, unable to feel cheerful or affectionate toward her own family. Encephalitis is an inflammation of the brain. Um, the inflammation lasts from 10 to 14 days, and when it's gone, uh, the, at the point that the inflammation is gone, the medical community can measure the damage that has been done to your brain. It can range from absolutely very little noticeable damage to serious, serious destruction. Um, it can be physical. After my encephalitis, I dragged my left leg when I walked. Now I do not. Um, you forget things. Pieces of knowledge are gone. Short-term memory can be dreadful. Even now, 13 years later, I often say to my husband, what are we doing Saturday night? And he'll say, we're going to a movie. Well, what about Saturday night? What are we going to do on Saturday night? We're going to a movie. Five minutes later, hon, do we have anything booked for Saturday night? And short-term memory is, can be very, very dreadful, very difficult. Despite living with the continued effects of encephalitis, as Wendy slowly hit new milestones and regained energy, a fuel began to burn inside of her, along with the desire to get out of the house and do something other than trying to get back to her old self. She wanted to do more. An opportunity to volunteer came along, and Wendy signed up to help at a local charity's 10K run. She described herself as a bucket of nervous anticipation, her assigned task was to offer water to the appreciative runners as they passed by. Wendy came home from that event with a smile on her face. She had contributed and made a difference. No one had known about her encephalitis. They had simply welcomed her as Wendy. No one had monitored her or supervised her. She was empowered. But still, she wanted more. Soon after she improved enough to travel, Wendy formed a new friendship with fellow encephalitis survivor Ingrid Gersey, whom she described as very inspiring and her first real experience in celebrating her new identity, a true success. From this meaningful relationship with someone who shared her passion for creating awareness about encephalitis, her real quest began a quest to meet and help others that led Wendy to establish the nonprofit Encephalitis Global, an alliance connecting encephalitis survivors and caregivers around the world. Through Wendy's leadership, Encephalitis Global has touched numerous lives lost, challenged, or temporarily wrecked by encephalitis. That same quest also led her to launch a website join Ingrid and Yahoo mail groups, design a Facebook discussion group that has attracted more than 3,000 members, and create the Inspire.com Encephalitis Forum. Since launching the Encephalitis Global Forum on Inspire.com 13 years ago, the membership has grown to over 8,400 members across 119 countries. It is the ninth largest rare disease community among more than 50 rare disease groups on Inspire. Wendy's efforts have resulted in a wonderfully supportive environment 
where encephalitis patients and caregivers can connect with others who understand what they're going through. John Novak and his team at Inspired.com had the following to say about working with Wendy over the years. I'm John Novak here on behalf of Inspire, which has had a wonderful partnership with Encephalitis Global through the efforts of Wendy and Ingrid. Wendy was one of the best partners we've ever worked with. She was tireless in her mission to help those that she could. One of the most innovative things that Wendy did was to personally greet every new member of her community on Inspire. She showed real interest in their stories, as well as asking how the online community could help, all within 24 hours of that person joining. It seems so obvious now, but back then we didn't realize how important that first interaction was. But as we watched Wendy and how members responded to her, we started encouraging other partner organizations to do the same thing, either with community leaders or volunteers. Participants in these various encephalitis forums have benefited greatly from annual Friends and Caregivers Encephalitis Survivors or FACES gatherings, where caregivers and survivors have been able to meet and share experiences face to face, as well as having the opportunity to meet healthcare professionals. Becky Dennis, president of encephalitis411.org, first met Wendy at a FACES conference 10 years ago, where Wendy was the first fellow survivor Becky had met. Becky recalls being nervous to meet others and how Wendy's arms embraced her, welcoming her, like so many before and after her, to this new family. Wendy's genuine, thoughtful, and fun demeanor quickly put survivors and caregivers at ease. Wendy had a way of inspiring others to emulate her passion to raise awareness, most notably, to reduce the frequency of misdiagnosis. It was also clear that she found it both empowering and healing to meet and help others. Sadly, our dear friend Wendy lost her courageous battle with cancer in 2020, less than a year after her diagnosis. She bravely fought cancer with her ever-positive spirit and most days, as her energy allowed, she remained loyal to responding to people impacted by encephalitis. During her battle, Wendy was able to enjoy time with family, her most prized possession, while they reflected on their worldwide travels, shared funny family jokes and memories of a recent wedding, watched wildlife together, and enjoyed her favorite treat, Nanaimo bars. So many of us in the encephalitis community would not even know each other without Wendy's relentless efforts. Whether you met her at a gathering or connected with her online, you interacted with one of the most beautiful, welcoming, and giving souls who ever lived. We will all miss Wendy and her inviting personality that has helped literally thousands of people. Wendy's station was that friend who could brighten up even the darkest moments. To honor her legacy, the World Encephalitis Day Alliance, to which Wendy contributed prior to cancer, has created a Lifelong Achievement Award which will be known as the Wendy Station Master Networker Award. This award is intended to honor a community member who exhibits qualities that reflect Wendy's dedication to encephalitis awareness, and most importantly, someone who emulates the following virtues which Wendy consistently demonstrated. Connecting families impacted by encephalitis, encouraging others to share their experiences, promoting awareness, organizing shared platforms to promote interaction, and identifying healthcare professionals focused on encephalitis. Please join us in honoring Wendy's station, a legacy to the encephalitis community.